All right, hello, and welcome to episode nine of my Hotline Miami in Unity tutorial. Uh, a little off center thing, oh, well, that don't matter. Uh, today we are doing score, so I'll just show you what it is first. So you can see we've got a little GUI thing. I know Hotline Miami doesn't actually show the combo, but I am just for purposes of you can fucking see it, can't you? So yeah, you can see. You get points for killing, if I just uh, reset, you get a uh, knife, that's a knife. Yep, more points for shiving them, uh, you get points for knocking them over as well, and you get a thing that shows you like, like the, I know it's not exactly the same graphically, because I'm not that fucking good at art, but, you know. Yeah, basically just score uh, the thing, shows the GUI, little, it's just, uh, sorry, I'm just getting to explain it, I'm just chatting on now. Okay, so, first thing is two prefabs, basically I've got a, uh, these are for the score display that you see when you hit something and it just shows the score above it, so this one is just, for. they've got a thousand for when you melee kill someone, and five hundred for when you either kill them with a gun or you just knock them down. So basically, this uses the generic animate and the score sprites. So it just animates through it and destroys it. It's not that particularly. Good. This is what the sprite sheet. That's the script. Sprite sheets. That's the one. So basically, it's literally just uh, each of the numbers just fading out. I know you could do this with the GUI, but I chose not to just for simplicity's sake. And um, you know, but yeah. Okay, so I think I have. All right, so enemy weapon controller. I don't know if I had something for this. No, oh, I must just be open. All right, so mainly there's two, two only two parts to this one actually. There's the enemy attack. So, uh, yeah. So it this is added in. Uh, what is it? Basically, it just if this basically if you're knocked down, it'll. Add score to the, uh, it'll get the score controller, which is a script on the game controller. So you can see it here, it's got GUI stuff and the two prefabs for the score display. And this texture is literally just a black one by one texture, which I've stretched because it doesn't have any anti aliasing or anything. So I'll just show you. So it's literally just a texture one by one, three bits, because it doesn't really need to be that big. You can just stretch it to whatever shape you want. Unless that shape isn't uh, wrecked, in which case you probably have to draw it out yourself, but whatever. Uh, so uh, then it has a get component. It just checks. It, basically, this just checks that if the web, enemy weapon controller is enabled, it'll add the score once for when the player's, the enemy has been knocked down, and then it'll disable it so it doesn't like repeatedly add it every time the code's called. And there's similar examples in the kill bullet and kill thing but these have uh, increased multipliers so it'll you know how well, you know how multipliers combos and that uh it sends just the score value and the position of the game object so and i'll show you this in the score controller so basically on add score it takes an integer for what you increase the score by and a position to show this is the position is just for spawning the gui bit like these so you know how it scores 500 and then just disappears, like just to show you that you've increased the score. That's all it does. So it instantiates either the 500 or the 1,000 because you can only increase it by 500 or 1,000. And there's just some debugging things there that I can get rid of. And it adds it to a temporary score value. This is just to hold it while the combo is still going on. So yeah, uh, there's an increased multiplier thing, which just uses uh, has a multiplier. It's just an integer to well the both integers the multiplier is an integer temp score holds an integer it just holds the score pretty much oh that should be one not that temp score holds a zero i'm sorry about that that was wrong so yeah uh five hundred thousand yeah they're just the game objects and the gui stuff i'll come back to in a second just because it's easier so basically on the countdown it's just a float as a timer counting down if the score is more than zero, or the temporary score, so that it suggests that there's a combo going on. And then if 
the reaches zero, it will add the com the temporary score multiplied by the multiplier to the score, and then it'll reset them to zero. And you don't need that. That's just debugging that I was using. Then that'll add the score, as you've seen. Okay, so now it uh, goes on to the uh, slightly more complex thing. It's the GUI. So basically, I've got a uh, one by one black texture just for the background. I've got a GUI style, which you set in the script in the inspector. I will show you that in a minute. And just got the game objects for showing the score thing. So I'll go over this bit first. So basically, this code takes it's the original width of your screen. So I'm on a 1080p IMAX, so it's 1920 by 1080. These have to be floats, so the like mapping is correct. Basic, uh, so it like it all appears correctly. Uh, so what this code does, so it's basically this section and this little bit at the end here. These help. Uh, I don't know about the if they've added it, but. I've been using Unity for a, Unity for a while, and that's Facebook. Sorry, uh, uh, basically what it is is it will scale the GUI that you've drawn based on like what the uh, aspect ratio I think it is or resolution of the screen. So I'll show you. See how it's like there, and if I switch the aspect ratio to five by four, it's sort of in the same place at the same ratio it stays with the screen like well, that's pretty much it yeah and you see reset it change it uh go to free aspect it gets longer and that basically that just keeps the gui looking consistent if a bit stretched i prefer to do it like that but you might not you might be able to do it with the other code i don't know so basically it's the screen dot width so it's the current width the width of the screen divided by the original width that it was programmed in, just to work out where everything should be. And I don't really know what this GUI matrix does, but I know it works. So as long as you copy it down like like for like, you should be fine. Uh, GUI.depth is just, all right, it's like layers of the GUI. So I think GUI.depth, if you get lower, it'll be closer to the camera. And if it's higher, it's further away. It might be inverted. You'll have to check the documentation for that. But basically, the lower the GUI depth is, the like it'll appear on top of other GUI layers. So if you had something else for GUI one, that would be like behind that if they were in the same location. Yeah. Okay. And this is basically these are just uh, with this method of scaling stuff, you have to like use the original width that you're using to make sure everything's correct. So in this case, it's 1920. It's minus 500 and whatever just to work out where it should be on the screen then this just draws the background texture on the background pars rect uh, and draws a score and combo multiplier just like with the current multiplier and the temp score hold and the combo the timer left the time left on the combo using the text uh gui style which is here okay sorry if this is a bit rambly you just have to give us a shout if you don't understand something then i will explain it Unless it's this code here, because I don't know how it works. It just works. I lifted it fucking years ago off the internet somewhere. Well, it's probably the Unity forums actually, but whatever. Okay, so yeah, I'll just go through the GUI style. All right, so basically this just defines the GUI components. Like if you don't use these, it'll just use the default like that uh, box with semi-transparent text and that. So basically I've got a font size of 30. It just stays in the middle center. For the text, no word wrap, we don't need that. So it uses, uh, I found a free font online, which is, oh god, I don't know what I've done there. That should be fine. Oh. Uh, hopefully that's not broken anything. So basically, this is a free font, it's not got any, it's like royalty free, so I don't need to credit anything, I can use it commercially and whatever. It's called Press Start 2P, or Bad Play, or something, I don't know. Uh, just set the text color to white. It uses the black background and it stretches the width. I'm not sure why, but it works fine. So, you know, no reason to change it if it's not broken. And yeah. Boom. Pow. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Max of 15,000 points you can get on this.
I still haven't actually done the punching sprites for the enemies, but oh well. So yeah, that is the score. A relatively easy one. I don't think there's anything else I need to talk about. But yeah. Also, you can play my game Loud or Quiet in on Itch.io. You can download it, play it, and whatever. I know there's a couple of glitches. I did improve it a bit just to make it easier to play, but I know there's a one level where the floor doesn't appear. I don't know what's gone on there, but whatever. I'll fix that at some point because I'm working on uh, an update for it, so you will be able to see that. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm probably going to stop at 1.2 once I know that all the bugs are available because I'm going to implement a new weapon system at some point, which I've got the sprites for that all done. I just need to code it up now. Uh, yeah, go play that. Link in the description. Cheers for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Make suggestions. All that shit. Bye.